An angle that encompasses the whole circle has a measure of 360 degrees. Why 360? Well, it's been that way for about 4,000 years and started with the Babylonians. Nobody seems to know exactly how it came about, but it seems to be a good choice since 360 is evenly divisible by so many integers. There are lots of articles and videos available if you have additional interest. In short, it's an arbitrary number, very old, and works pretty well. Since all the way around a circle is 360 degrees, then halfway around must be 180 degrees, a straight angle as covered in TR-02. Half of that would be 90 degrees, a quarter of the way around a full circle, also called a right angle. A 90 degree angle can, in turn, be divided evenly into two halves of 45 degrees and thirds of 30 degrees. We'll refer to 30 and 45 degree angles and their multiples a lot. In trigonometry, a point on a circle centered at the origin represents the standard position angle whose terminal side passes through the point. Let me see that again differently because it's so important. A point on a circle can represent an angle, the standard position angle whose terminal side passes through the point. For example, this point represents a 30 degree angle, because if we put a 30 degree angle in standard position, the terminal side passes through it. This is exactly how a protractor works. We line up the initial side with the edge of the protractor and read the angle from the terminal side corresponding to a point on the protractor. There are an infinite number of angles around a circle, but there are some common angles that every trigonometry student needs to know. In fact, they're often called the common angles. There are the multiples of 30 degrees all the way around the circle. You need to know these. And also, the multiples of 45 degrees all the way around. You must know these too. Notice that the quadrantal angles are common to both groups. Here are the common angles combined. Given an angle measure for one of these common angles, you must know, or be able to figure out quickly, the corresponding point. And given a point, you must know, or be able to figure out quickly, the corresponding angle. We'll make learning these easier by using the quadrantal angles as little landmarks. So you need to know these five quadrantal angles. Remember, 0 and 360 degrees are coterminal, so that's two angles with the same point. You also need to know the two acute common angles, 30 and 45 degrees, and you may as well memorize 60 degrees since it's right there in quadrant 1. To find an angle of interest, we're going to start with a nearby quadrantal angle and add or subtract an acute common angle. For example, what angle does this point represent? Well, it's 180 degrees minus 30 degrees, so 150 degrees. What is this point's angle? 270 degrees plus 45 degrees, so 315 degrees. This one could also be 360 degrees minus 45 degrees. Same result, 315 degrees. Use whatever quadrantal landmark angle that seems simplest to you. What angle goes with this point? Well, it's one of our acute common angles, 60 degrees. Don't forget them just because they're easy. And this point is 180 degrees. Easy because it's a quadrantal angle. You should know the quadrantal angles without hesitation. Since you should know them, let's remove the acute common angles and the quadrantal angles from our circle. That only leaves nine points that need just a little work to identify. And with practice, you might memorize these too. Let's go the other way. Which point corresponds to 300 degrees? Well, we really use the same technique. 270 degrees plus 30 degrees. So this point. Which is the point for 120 degrees? 90 degrees plus 30 degrees. Here. Which point means 225 degrees? 180 degrees plus 45 degrees. Here. So again, given a point, you should know the common angle, and given a common angle, you should know the point. Spoiler alert, we'll be adding more and more information to this circle diagram. 
and everything will be much simpler and easier later if you have mastery over these angles. So please practice. The supplemental video to this lecture is TR-04X and it includes helpful drills. Please learn these angles forwards and backwards. There's a supplemental Z video, TR-04Z, which covers the representation of fractional degrees in DMS, or degree minute second notation. It's probably not mandatory, check with your instructor, but could be interesting and helpful. In the next video, TR-05, I'll introduce another way to measure angles, the radian.